everything checks the appropriate boxes, then Crew 11 can doff or get out of their spacesuits, those new IVA suit for Mike Fink and company. And then from there, it's going to be about a 16-hour ride to the International Space Station, and that's where they will link up with the orbiting laboratory and the seven current residents on there. Crew 10 is currently on board, as well as M uh, Soyuz MS-27 with NASA astronaut Johnny Kim, and they'll bring that seven to a team of 11, uh, hopefully in the early morning hours uh, coming up uh, tomorrow. So we continue to stand by, approaching 18 minutes into today's flight. We are just waiting confirmation that the nose cone is fully deployed, but all hooks are open. We should be hearing that confirmation hopefully in the next, in, within the next minute or so. And hopefully we'll also have great views of that nose cone deploy. And that's a great view on the right-hand side of the International Space Station Flight Control Room in Houston, Texas, as NASA's Johnson Space Center, where we got updates throughout the day today from Sandra Jones as the International Space Station monitoring today's flight and the ascent of NASA SpaceX Crew 11. And they hold goal earlier on as they are ready to receive Dragon. And we just received confirmation that the nose clone, nose cone, has completely opened and deployed. So great news as, again, all those checkouts continuing to happen for Crew 11 after a successful on-time liftoff today. And they were able to get past the clouds, the weather that we've been monitoring, and a successful first stage and second stage performance to propel them into orbit. Crew 11 is comprised of NASA astronauts Zena Cardman and Mike Fink, along with JAXA astronaut Kimia Yui and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platinov. And they are now safely in orbit following that nine minute, approximately nine minute ride after liftoff today from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The crew now, as mentioned, has a little bit about a 16 hour journey before they reach their destination. Dragon SpaceX, we see a nominal nose cone opening at TCS and four bulkhead, bulkhead to Draco checkouts. Great call out right there. Dragon copies all, good news. And that's what we were waiting for there was that call up to crew. Looking forward in the timeline, you have your first burn up on your forward view. That's the phase burn in approximately 25 minutes. Uh, we will also be monitoring the stage two deorbit to give you the go for suit doffing and we're expecting that at T plus 45 minutes. Dragon copies will be monitoring and T plus 45 approximately for suit doffing. We're with you in the tunnel. Great conversations there with the team on the ground, and there they are, Crew 11. Happy as can be in orbit now, and they have a 16-hour journey before they reach their destination, the International Space Station, as docking currently targeted for tomorrow morning, Saturday, August 2nd, at 3 a.m. Eastern Time, 12 a.m. Pacific, to the space spacing port of the station's Harmony module. Now, between now and then, Drake, uh, Dragon will perform a series of burns as it catches up to the space station. And that first burn you heard him talking about uh, is the phase burn, and that happens about 30 minutes or so from now. So we'll continue to monitor the, uh, the Dragon spacecraft, and the teams on the ground will continue to monitor that first of a sequence of burns to help them stair-step their way up to the International Space Station. Human spaceflight has come so far in the last five years with Dragon. In addition to flying people, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft also enables researchers the opportunity to fly critical science to orbit. So far, SpaceX and Dragon have carried more than 1,000 research experiments to and from low Earth orbit, both to the International Space Station and on our free flyer missions. From DNA sequencing to 3D printing, studies enabled by Dragon and the Space Station test a variety of technologies, systems, and materials that will be needed for future long-duration exploration missions. Every mission yields critical science, critical research, and learnings that help make life both on Earth and in space better. And flights just like today's help us continue to lay this foundation for our future among the stars and continue our mission to make life multiplanetary. We'll be signing off from SpaceX for now, so we're going to send you back over to Kennedy Space Center. But before we go, we want to thank NASA, Joseph, for entrusting us with today's mission. And thank you all for being with us today. Well, thank you very much, Samia, Ronnie, and the teams here at SpaceX. It was another phenomenal opportunity to, to catch NASA SpaceX Crew 11 in orbit today. And with that, we're going to say goodbye from here in Hawthorne until we pick back up with our docking coverage being at 2 a.m. 
uh, Saturday, August 2nd, tomorrow, for that targeting docking to the space-facing port of the station's Harmony module at 3 a.m. Eastern. So for now, thank you for joining us, and we're going to toss it back over to Nick and Daryl at Kennedy Space Center to wrap up today's launch coverage. A great job. If you're just joining us, welcome back to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'm Daryl Nail here with NASA astronaut Nick Haig. Just moments ago, we saw Crew 11 safely on orbit with the nose cone, nose cone open, checkouts complete, and a few words from the crew as they settled into their new environment aboard Dragon. And Nick, watching him in that moment floating free, you must feel good about your friends and colleagues successfully getting to orbit. Today. Absolutely. Uh, you know, at the moment of liftoff, the the, the you know tingle on the back of your neck the chills and and watching them go into into orbit and then to hear them call down after they're there safely uh, the joy in their voice the and then the gratitude for the teams that got them there uh, just you can't help but feel awesome right now everybody that's associated with this this launch and and now it comes you know a completion for Zena Cardman the commander who was part of crew 9 uh, was pulled off that mission, you continued on. This is now her chance, now she's in space. She she had to wait a little bit longer, uh, but now finally gets to fly. Yeah, it's 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 a full circle moment, and it's a, a thrill to be here and uh, and just be part of it. We appreciate you from the very start saying that you wanted to document this moment with her. Uh, with her here at the Kennedy Space Center, watching them go up at that moment. Mike Fink has been around for a while. Uh, he's a veteran astronaut, but there's been quite a gap. He he finally now, after 14 years, back up in space. Yeah, it, you know, talk about patience being a key quality of an astronaut. <laughs> it's not just sitting strapped into a rocket for two and a half hours prior to launch and not being able to move. It's, you know doing your job and waiting for your opportunity and that might be a decade or more and uh, and and to take that time and to do so much with it while you're still waiting to launch into space uh, it just shows the character that he has incredible incredible character and incredible character <laughs> is mike <laughs> well, quick story here we want to tell you um you know when Zena Cardman was here, and she did the co-host role for Crew 9 when you launched. Um, after the launch broadcast was over, she pulled out uh, a deck of cards and just offhandedly was like, oh, hey, I want to show you something. And she showed me this deck of cards. It was the Crew 9 deck of cards. And she had drawn, hand-drawn, the portraitures of, like, each of the Crew 9 uh, members, yeah. which included you, yeah. and she was on it, though she didn't get to fly. It was the card deck that you used when you played to get rid of your bad luck. Yeah, in the suit-up room, yeah. Right. And so I'm like, you hand-drew these? Yeah. I was, like, super impressed. So, of course, fast forward to recently, you walk in the pre-production meeting, and you're like, hey, Zeno wants you to have this deck of cards. <laughs> it's the Crew 11 deck of cards, and we want to show them to you now. And she redrew yeah. her yeah. crew. And we want to show those to you. Hold she, that up. She, she's, an, she's an amazing, amazing artist. All the crew members each got a face card. So she's on there. Oleg's on there. Mike and Kim and uh, Kimya. And here they are. She hand drew this. We have a close-up of this shot. We want to show you so you can get a real full appreciation. Hand-drawn portraitures by Zena Cardman, the commander. Um, you talk about many talents. Just another talent in what appears to be just this extremely well-rounded astronaut and commander. Oh, absolutely. Uh, not all astronauts are created equal. I cannot do that. <laughs> 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 she, she is talented. That's incredible. And of course, they played with this deck of cards uh, when they got rid of Xena's bad luck today. Yeah, and it worked. And, and it worked. <laughs> Look at that weather. We were looking at the cloud just off to the south. You know, the power of positive thinking. <laughs> Your positive <laughs> thinking is like, you know, perfect. All right, we're going to send it uh, back out for one more interview with Tony. And in the meantime, you and I are going to play some high-low card for your next space assignment, see if I can win it from you. <laughs> Tony, take it away. Thanks, Daryl. Looking forward to who wins that game. You know, joining me is now Stephen Chan with the Commercial Crew Program. Stephen, I mean, what an amazing launch and landing of Falcon's first stage. How are you feeling? That was amazing, Tony. Uh, you know, to watch the, the, the Crew 11 Dragons line up on the Falcon 9, um, just it's incredible, you know, to see that. Uh, on the personal note, 
uh, Mike Fink is a dear friend of the family, and uh, it warms my heart to see him to go back to Space Station to work and live there. Um, as the, I am the external liaison for the commercial crew program, so it's my job to make sure that our external partners are uh, coordinated and informed to support our missions, and those partners include Coast Guard, FAA, um, Air Force, uh, Space Force, and other DOD partners. Today, the Coast Guard is out there making sure the waterway is uh, safe, and uh, you know, FAA is clearing the waterway. So it is, uh, uh, I, I get to see how much work it goes behind the scenes to make sure our missions are successful. And uh, I am uh, looking forward to have the Crew 11 get on orbit and then uh, come back safely with Crew 10. You know, Steve, you played a critical role in um, in changing the lows, the splashdown locations for Dragon to the Pacific Ocean. Can you talk to us a little bit about your role in that and the significance in changing those splashdown locations? Yes, the, the moving Dragon recovery to Pacific all had to do about um, the safety of the public and uh, the trunk um, debris uh, by going to the Pacific, we ensure that the trunk is enter over Pacific Ocean and have no risk at all to the public. So, um, and, and thanks to our external partners, we work with them to make sure that uh, the Dragon can be recovered safely and they can perform their important mission, like keeping the waterway safe, keeping the uh, airspace safe, and then the DOD can perform their missions around Calif California coast. You know, speaking about all of those external partners that you have to work with, I mean, it took a huge effort to get this underway. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that worked? Yes, so for our West Coast partners, you know, the Dragon landing in the Pacific is a new challenge for them. And they have, as I mentioned earlier, they have their other national priorities. So we are very thankful to our partners and their leadership who recognize that Dragon uh, is also a very important national priority. So we're very thankful to our Coast Guard, Navy, uh, other DOD partners and FAA that help us make that happen. And I'm looking forward to work with them to bring uh, Crew 10 home safely. Uh, they have, uh, SpaceX has successfully brought back three Dragon the last few months and uh, we are confident they can help us get there next week, in the next few weeks. Absolutely. Uh, few yeah, absolutely, Steve. I mean, you know, we just launched, but like you said, we now have the rest of the mission. We have to bring Crew 10 home. Can you tell us what, um, what are the next steps for you? Where will you be going next? Uh, we'll be working with uh, SpaceX and our uh, government partners to make sure we look at those reentry opportunities and uh, coordinate and inform each other, you know, all the, the uh, act, important activities. So um, it's just a lot of coordination. And uh, we, we're thankful that our partner uh, worked with us on this national priority. Absolutely. Well, we wish you the best of luck on the rest of the mission. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank now you, we'll send it back to, uh, to Daryl and Nick. All right, thank you so much, Tony. And certainly you can hear the emotion in people's voices, especially Stephen here. Just so proud of seeing Mike Fink. He has touched a lot of people here at the Kennedy Space Center in his time working with everyone here throughout the commercial crew program. Yeah, absolutely. He has had an impact. And uh, you had an impact on me. I, I lost. Uh, to you for your next space assignment. So, uh, so, so we need to uh, we need to clear the record here because y you tried to stack the deck <laughs> and karma won out there because you dealt me the ace by accident. So, um, that I'm uh, sorry. That's just the way it goes. Thank you for being <laughs> so truthful and honest. Uh, you know. Is this show over yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? We're we're excited for you, Nick. We we can't wait to see what you do uh, next as well. You, you've uh, brought so much experience and insight and knowledge to this show, and I I know that you wanted from the very beginning after you launched you told me that you wanted to do this for Xena for your friends for your colleagues for your team and uh, your your stand up guy telling us early on like hey I'll be there and I'll do it thank you very much for that no, my pleasure uh in my mind is just another Friday night 
floating around the table in the Russian service module, having dinner with uh, our playlist. It, you know, it's an eclectic playlist of music that d mixes in everybody's favorites. So you've got you've got Russian traditional folk music and hard rock and American country western, and and it's just the the culture that the crew has built and and me trying to talk with my my cosmonaut colleagues in in broken russian and them talking to me normal it becomes so normal to do that and and that's my hope is that we can get more people to experience that normal that normal living in space but also that normal of bringing together people from around the globe and just getting to know each other yeah yeah, yeah. understanding each other appreciating where we come from as different countries you know what strikes me about that is a memory that you chose is you went on evas you went outside the spacecraft yeah. outside the and and saw the entire planet underneath your feet but you pick mate floats up and watches it with you it's just that much more spectacular oh, that's awesome that's awesome nick haig nasa astronaut and a brigadier general with the space force thank you so much for being thank here you. you did a fantastic job and with that our coverage comes to a close but the journey for crew 11 well it is just beginning after a stunning launch from Kennedy Space Center and a successful ride to orbit, the crew is now on their way to the International Space Station. This is a shortened trip, 15.3 hours, with docking targeted for a Saturday, August 2nd, uh, at approximately 3 a.m. Eastern Time. And we'll pick back up, of course, with our coverage beginning at 2 a.m. Eastern Time on that same Saturday tomorrow for a targeted uh, docking at that moment. And so with that, we want to just say thank you to everyone who was participating in this show today. If you want to follow along with the mission, Crew 11's journey to the space station, just by uh, check in with our real-time mission audio, it will have the flight controllers communicating with the team. You can check that out, the QR code that's at the bottom of your screen now. You just pull out your phone and scan that. Uh, you can watch on your phone or watch on your TV with a streaming app. We'll pick back up live with broadcast coverage about two hours before docking right here on NASA+. Plus. Nick, thanks again. Really appreciate no. it, man. Two My launch pleasure. attempts. I mean, you are fantastic. This is, this is a long slog through the day, but it's wonderful to document God, seeing your friends go up to space. Yeah, wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Absolutely. So with that, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great afternoon, everyone, and thank you again for watching us get these astronauts to space. Continue to follow us as well, and make sure that you keep looking up. We are seeing the astronauts that are flying today, and once again, getting suited up. This is a tradition that happens before crew can leave the suit-up room. Crew 11 walking the hallway, ready to do it again. Here they come, Crew 11, walking outside before launch. Well, there's Xena giving the last wave with the window down. Crew 11 on the road to launch pad 39A. Well, there is our commander and our pilot looking up at their rocket. And here comes Mike and Xena, getting ready to get inside.